I'm Bill Allett. I'm the Managing Director of the Martin Trust Center for MIT Entrepreneurship. We help hundreds of entrepreneurs build great products and great teams. These are the two most important elements for a successful new venture. We encourage our students to have hackers, hustlers, and hipsters on the team because this hybrid vigor increases our odds of producing a truly great company. I'm Rodin Bashimov. I run an experimental production group at MIT. I'm also a teaching fellow in this course. Bill said that entrepreneurship is about team. Well, so is online education. We brought together Hollywood cinematographers, great graphic designers, instructional designers, MIT entrepreneurs, and MIT faculty to create the Ferrari of online education for you. When MIT first started in the online education area, we put people in the back of the room with cameras to record the lectures. This is 600, also known as Introduction to Computer Science. We're going to start with nonlinear analysis. And what is not covered today can and will be on the exam. That was a good start, but as time has gone on, we can do so much more. Today, with the advanced technologies, as well as incorporating one medium, filmmaking, and taking it into a whole different medium, the internet and online education. The goal of the course is to continue the entrepreneurial evolution around the world. If at least one of you starts a company and feels like you're changing the world and the people that you bring into your company, they feel like they're changing the world, we have done our job. Nothing will make us happier than that. So welcome to the course and good luck. MIT began as an institution designed to serve the needs of our society at an early stage of its industrialization. If we are to produce the kind of world required for the safety and well-being of the human beings who live in it, we must build on this international tradition. Yes, we're live. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Hello from Brisbane, everybody. Um, How are you? I'm good, man. And uh, you're in Boston, so that's right. How's things? Now, there's going to be a little bit of a delay from when um, the questions come up on the display board, um, and uh, when when we actually answer it. There's about ten or fifteen, anywhere up to twenty seconds delay of what's going through there. But we can see you that you're out there. There's there's literally hundreds of people. It looks like are watching um, at the moment. So that's pretty exciting. So hi everyone, come and say hi back to us. Um, so uh, the stream's a little bit chunky, but we'll go as best we can. So let's um, let's do this. All right. Okay. So. Um, today we're going to be um, live streaming from um, Boston at MIT, or MIT at Boston in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and also we're bringing you live to to Brisbane with Billy Kirkley, our strategic partnership manager in, Hi guys. in Australia and Brisbane. Um, he's going to be talking a little bit more about why Brisbane, why Australia, and what are the you know really interesting things that are happening in Australia, and why are we doing it? Why are we doing the next MIT Global Entrepreneurship um, Bootcamp in Australia? So, uh, without further ado, Billy, take it away. Guys, it's a great pleasure to um, bring Bootcamp to Australia. A little quick history: um, I, where you are right now, I was there three years ago. In fact, uh, both Andrew and myself were uh, a little over three years ago 
um, March it was for us when we were started. We found out about this amazing program online through edX, um, did the first 101 online course, filtered through, and before we knew it, surprisingly, this magical email came through and said, how would you like to come to MIT? And uh, Andrew, myself, and 47 other people ended up uh, jumping on planes, flying all the way over to Boston, um, and doing something that no one, even at MIT, really knew uh, what was going to happen uh, or the outcome of what was going to go on. Um, and uh, at that point, as I went through the program, um, there was another fellow Australian there called Miranda. Um, we both saw this was so amazing and we have to, you know, we've got to take it to Australia and do this in That's Australia. Right. So three years later, um, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of no's and a lot of yeses along the way. We've finally picked it up and we're very excited um, to actually bring it uh, here to, to Brisbane. Um, and look, I've, I've tried to prepare a little surprise for you. I've got a bit of footage of Brisbane um, that we've shot. Um, so just later on, hopefully, if we've got some time, um, Andrew, can I chuck some footage out there so oh, yeah, can sort of see what we're doing? Fantastic. Yeah. So um, Brisbane's a pretty amazing place. It's a, um, from an innovation point of view, I didn't realise um, how amazingly good Brisbane was at, at innovating. And it wasn't until I had the privilege of being able to travel a little bit around the world um, with MIT and see various different innovation precincts around the place, I started to uh, see myself as, a, as, an, as an Aussie um, that we actually... Uh, do some pretty amazing things, and we stand up against the world. And that was that was that was the first uh, real big moment. It's like, wow, we actually really do some great stuff out there. Um, and now it would, it's just an absolute privilege to be able to have so many people interested in coming back to this pl to Brisbane um, and joining in and being part of this uh, amazing innovation. Um, project and program that we're all working on at the moment. So, Andrew, talk on. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, like, um, you know, I, I, we, we did the uh, last weekend in Seoul um, earlier this year in March, and, um, you know, um, all that to say, you know, it's not just about coming to MIT in Cambridge, but also how can, how can MIT now be the MIT of everywhere? And, you know, it's, uh, it's a challenge for you to come to MIT. You know, we're very small here, but now how can we bring MIT to the world, right? So this is why we're doing it. How can we bring MIT to the world? How can we bring MIT education, MIT entrepreneurship to the world? How can um, we do this in a, in a rigorous way? Even though we're not here at MIT, how can we not only just do that, but also then connect and, and bring along countries and regions um, to accomplish even more as we work together. And so really, you know, it stems from the idea that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you really want to do great things, um, you need to go, go together. And, and that's really key to what we do here at the MIT Boot Camps. Um, you know, you're going to get the best uh, mentors. Uh, MIT alumni and serial entrepreneurs, you're going to get uh, uh, judges, investors uh, who are going to be, you know, um, simulating the best, uh, what, what it would look like if you were at an investor pitch. Um, and it's pretty much going to go from zero to 100 in six days. Um, you're not going to get very much sleep, uh, so start sleep loading now if you truly intend in, in coming. Um, yeah, and we're, we're here to, to share some questions. Um, absolutely. So, uh, Alberta Nodal is asking, there are many startup programs. How is the MIT Global Entrepreneurship Bootcamp different, um, like Lean Startup Machine, um, like Startup Weekend? There are so many, so many uh, good uh, responses to that. So, uh, Billy, do you want to start? And while I pull up more, more responses from, from the alumni, um, and look, Andrew's pretty much covered it. Like you guys, 
um, it, it, there, there, there is when, to, to go through a program like this. Um, the, we are not joking when we talk about condensing. Um, and just let me fix my picture. Uh, but we, we're not joking when we're talking about um, condensing a year's worth of work, uh, a year's worth of content uh, into those six days. We, we literally cram it down, condense it in, and, uh, and we deliver on it. And all the people that, are, um, that, that go through the program when there isn't a single person that, that uh, doesn't believe that they've just done a year's worth of work. And look, when you see it on stages, the pictures, um, you can see a year's worth of work. And look, this year in Brisbane, we've got some amazingly uh, exciting stuff to do. There's a couple of things there uh, I, I can't yet reveal. Um, um, I'm just waiting to be able to get the thumbs up. There's, there, there's a couple of things that we've got to uh, put out to the media first. Um, but what we're going to be doing in Brisbane on pitch day uh, is like nothing we've never done before. It's... <laughs> Uh, it, what do you, Andrew, do you agree? It's going to be very, oh, yeah. Yeah. very exciting. Um, and, uh, you, you know, like the, the world's going to be able to be very excited to see what we're doing with, with some of this stuff. Um, That's right. We've got questions coming through, man. There's like thousands of, of, of Yeah, questions. absolutely. Um, how so, does, it, how does so it feel I like... I just want to end off with Alberto's, Alberto's um, um, question and to just give you... Four quotes from, from Bootcamp Alumni, okay? Um, at Startup Weekend, um, the focus is about building a product fast, that will, but, but then, you know, at the Bootcamp, you will learn how to uh, build a company that will last a lifetime. Um, you will get the best possible knowledge surrounding, surrounded by outstanding people who, who pushes you to your boundaries. Um, you know, Startup Weekend, as an example, builds products, but... Um, the MIT builds the best product you, right? Um, and then there are other questions. Let's see what else. Um, one of the other questions. So, so one of the big things. Uh, what are we doing differently? And and fundamentally, every bootcamp is different because um, you know we are we're constantly constantly innovating. And um, one of the big things this year is that we're for the first time ever having startup teams apply. Um, this is this is going to be very interesting. Um, we're excited for startup teams to to apply and come to the boot camp. Um, but at the same time, it's a high risk uh, uh, process. But uh, we're we're prepared for that. What happens if your startup team discovers yep. that you have no market or well, you have and, no and, and look, I'm I'm going to interrupt because um, with. Well, with the startup teams, this is brand new, so we don't. This is and this is MIT. We experiment, um, yeah. so we're not sure how this is going to happen. We're going to um, work as close as we possibly can with everybody. Um, you, you know, our aim is to is to set up success um, with the teams, but this is this is a new a, a new dynamic formula that, um, with with allowing teams to go in. Um, the rest, everybody else, we work on team formation. So you'll find five people you've never met before or four people you've never met before um, join together and, and work together as a team during the week. And, and frankly, that's an amazing transformational process that uh, you, 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 you haven't met on the first day and within the first 24 hours, even before you truly know everyone's background, um, you're in there working. Um, Taking your skill set and delivering it, and and, uh, and and relying and trusting and and hoping and knowing everyone else in your team's got your back, um, and and that is an extremely unique. I've, very few people I've met have done stuff like that before. Um, anyway, go on, Andrew. Yeah. So so there were a few other questions. Um, if, so anyway, uh, I think Luis Corrales, um, I hope I answered your question. If not, please post again. If you apply as a team, you will start off as a team. Um, you know, then I think probably there are other questions like what happens if other people are interested in joining your team to work on the idea, uh, on your idea, startup team's idea for the bootcamp? Or what happens if your team uh, spontaneously combusts? Uh, due to team conflict or 
there's so many things that could happen. And so on the one hand, you could say applying as a team is great, but then at the same time, you could say applying as an individual could be might be better for me. Um, so you have to weigh that. Um, the other part to that, I think, um, really it's about pressure testing your team. Um, can your team truly withstand the rigors of the startup cycles? Um, yeah, so, um, and then I, uh, Eunice asked a question, big question about scholarship deadlines. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit, let's talk a little bit about that. The, um, um, can I? Can yeah, I start do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so look, we've, we've had a, a, just an unbelievable uh, amount of interest in the scholarships and, and you know, we've got heaps of inquiry coming through. So we've tried to, to look at it various different ways. Um, and right now with the scholarship process to be considered, um, the deadline's the 15th Boston time. Now, if, if, I'm, I'm in the 16th at the moment. So being in Australia, I'm, I'm actually, I, when, when I'd say this to Andrew all the time, man, I'm from the future. That's why I know everything. <laughs> and uh, so we've, we've come through the 15th, but in Boston, is it still the 15th? When does the 15th end? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so it's 3.20 p.m. right now. Yep. In, in Boston, and okay. so roughly, I would say, another eight hours. Great. Okay. Eight, eight hours, so what, minutes. So what, that, what we're saying there is, is that you've got to have started your application. Now, technically, to start your application, for us to know and record the date, um, it's, this is extremely, extremely difficult. Only a MIT person can do this. Um, you need to be able to put your first name and last name and email address in and, and press the submit button. Um, before the 15th ends, which is today. Now, that starts the process. Now, it gets a lot harder from there. Um, I think we've got the uh, CV we've got to upload, and a little story about yourself. Um, and then there's more rounds that, that come through. And they cycle through um, every few days, like three to four days. Um, and it takes a little bit of time because humans look at this. It's not all computer processed. It's uh, humans look. Um, and then eventually you'll get emails going through and this next week, um, Andrew, is, next week we're going to be sending out um, the first rounds of interview invites and we're, it's all hands on deck. We've got, how many people have we got currently? Um, 38. We've got 30, 38 weekend alumni. 38 alum, MIT alumni um, conducting interviews um, and it's all hands on deck. Uh, our aim is that we can send out some Christmas presents. <laughs> and by Christmas presents, uh, Billy means um, admissions letters. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, look, I'm, I'm seeing people asking when, when will they find out about scholarships. So, Andrew, um, would you be able to provide a little bit of yeah, detail on that? Yeah, so, absolutely. So, um, the way it works with us is that there's a scoring criteria that is available on the website bootcamp.mit.edu slash entrepreneurship slash program. Um, you will see five scoring criteria on that page um, and that is how we judge uh, you know, and score every application and interview. Um, what then happens is that once you meet a, a threshold for admission, uh, you will receive an admissions letter um, if you exceed a particular um, score threshold, you will automatically get shortlisted um, to write a merit letter for uh, a scholarship based on merit. Um, so some examples of people who have received scholarships uh, from the first class we had Leonita who is from Indonesia and she was working and on a startup that was um, going to fundamentally change the blood donation system in Indonesia and since then she has been named uh, Forbes 30 under 30 in healthcare and she has launched her startup. And so another example is Laurent from also the first class. He was a... And Miranda. And he's, yeah. Sorry, what? And Miranda as well. Well, well, Miranda didn't get the scholarship. Oh, no. Oh, right. Yes, of course. Yeah, so, so Laurent got the scholarship, right? So Laurent um, and Miranda met at the boot camp. Uh, Miranda's from, uh, from Melbourne, Australia. Laurent is from 
uh, Paris, France. He was working in Papua New Guinea with Doctors Without Borders as a water and sanitation engineer. And so he was awarded uh, the scholarship to come to the boot camp. His pitch was to uh, provide clean, reading, uh, clean, clean drinking water pipe to every house or home in, in the developing country. And, and since the boot camp uh, happened, they, uh, they have actually started a pilot in Niger, Africa, and, and they got to pitch the president of France. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. And then uh, in December last year, they won half a million dollars at the uh, Verizon Powerful Answers Award. Um, and now they are on to their second startup, the Zigway, which is in uh, Myanmar and in, in Asia. And now they're looking at how they can change the uh, financial industry in, in Myanmar. So that's going to be exciting. All right, so more questions. Yeah, look, I'm just seeing still a few about the scholarship stuff. Um, I, I yeah. think the easiest answer to this is that if you've received the email and you're watching this stream, you've already got you, you you're already um, in in the pool of eligible scholarship um, people. So now it's just up to you uh, to be able to make sure that your story um, uh, uh, is world changing. That that we can see that you've got entrepreneurial potential and you've got potential to make a difference. Um, That's right. And, uh, and, and so that's, it's up to you now. Once you, you're through, put your story together, um, show the whole team, show the, the interview team um, that you've got potential to change the world. Um, and good luck for that. You know, we, we're, we're excited. People at, like Laurent and Leah Kona um, have, are out there changing the world now. We want to see more people like that from the world changing the world. That's right. Uh, moving on to the next question, Alejandro Torres asks, what are the biggest, pro largest problems we are going to face during the boot camp? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the largest problem. I think probably um, the largest problem is how do you manage conflict? How do you work and push forward when you're tired, when, you know, like what the startup life look like? And... Um, that's what you're going to face, right? Like a lot of people who attend the boot camp may not necessarily have previous startup experience. Um, one of the things we talk about is like how far can you go? How far can you push yourself? How far can you... Um, you, th you think... So there was some research done by the Navy SEALs um, where when you, at, the, at the point where you stop and you say, I want to give up, you actually still have 40% reserve left um, and so the question to, to you as a uh, potential boot camp attendee is how much more do you have left in your tank to, to go the distance and, and do you truly believe in the work that you're doing um, that you want to invest your life into doing that, right? Um, another question from Joel uh, Nieto is will there be mentors or coaches assigned? In fact, yes, uh, there will be mentors assign, uh, MIT alumni mentors, um, and other uh, boot camp alumni as well. They will be coming from, from Boston and literally from everywhere else around the world to come to Australia to, to provide mentoring um, in the boot camp. Right. Um, Billy, you want to take any other questions? Yeah, look, I can see a couple of other great questions coming through at the moment. Um, so we're, we're a good one here from Sunday. Hi, Sunday. Um, and the the question there with Sunday is um, how many actual uh, people are coming through for the boot camp? Like how many are we going to select all up for Brisbane? Um, and, and at the moment, um, it's actually restricted based on the size of the room that we've got at uh, Queensland University of Technology um, to 70 places. Um, and uh, it, it's going to be exceptionally difficult uh, for us to exceed that number simply because we just can't fit any more people in um, to the space. Look, we've got more fantastic applicants. Um, you know, there are larger spaces, uh, but that is, it's going to be tremendously difficult for us to, to, to expand and grow. So 70 is the number. Um, generally, the last sort of three or four 
or the last three camps, we've, we've, we've bounced around 70 and that seems like a really nice manageable group. Um, when the number gets a little bit bigger than that, uh, as a cohort, you don't get to meet everybody. Um, the smaller t cohorts are quite, they're are tighter. Um, the larger cohorts past 70, um, when they go up to about 80 or 90, it's, it's like, oh, I can't quite remember I've, I, I, that, that, that person in the cohort. So that's the other reason why we try and keep that number about, about 70. Um, there's also another one on, I saw one on accommodation. Um, so let's just talk about travel and accommodation and getting over um, because, you know, there's, there are a few scholarships, but a large majority of people will be funding their own way over. Um, so we've done, uh, can I talk about, uh, I can talk about all the deals, Andrew. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we've done some pretty smashing uh, great deals. Um, we've got group accommodation. So in Boston, for instance, when, when we run an event in Boston, um, we try and get everyone into a hostel. Um, which, which um, is a really actually a, a lovely, very well kept place. Um, it just gets everyone, the whole group, in together. Um, some people choose to stay at Air Airbnb. Um, I'll, I'll confess, I'm a bit of an introvert, and I do like a little bit of personal space. And when we run something as intense as a boot camp, like even the first time, uh, I chose to stay in Cambridge in, a, in an Airbnb, and, and a few of the other places I've gone to, I've I've done the same thing. I've also shared rooms with a couple of other guys as well. Um, and so I've, I've had experience in both um, the shared accommodation and uh, also having my own rooms. And I, I've got to confess also that the shared accommodation provided the best experiences. <laughs> uh, it was like being at school care. So here in Brisbane, um, we've found awesome accommodation. Um, their service departments and uh, so we've got two bedroom and one bedroom apartments. The two bedroom compartments are going to be configured with single beds or double beds so that um, boot campers can, we've, got, we've tried to make the space that you can bring your partner along um, and, uh, and, and you can have a, a, room, a, a shared room in a serviced two bedroom apartment with your own bathroom um, and also, uh, or apartment yourself. So. We've got that room rate down to $60 a night uh, if you're sharing with four other people. So um, if you've got the single bed, $60. If you're going to take a whole room to yourself, it'll be about $120 a night. Um, and I believe the whole apartment, uh, the one bedroom apartments, um, are around $180 a night. They're sort of, they're, that's still bouncing through, but they're the numbers and they're really good numbers. Now, talking about bringing your apart a partner over, um, by the way, if you do get into the program, um, make sure you tell your partner they're not going to see you for the week, because um, we just got you like you'll literally uh, sleep, hack, work, go back to sleep. Um, so, but bring out your partner. We've done a, a, a fantastic deal with Virgin Australia um, and Virgin Airlines Australia. Uh, so, we we uh, when. Uh, acceptance letters and admission letters are going out. We're going to make sure that within that communication will be the ability to book accommodation with what I've just talked about, plus also book airline flights um, at a rate that you will not be able to buy online. Um, I, I can't reveal the prices uh, because people are flying from all around the place, uh, but Virgin's committed to us that, yeah, there will be a price that you just won't be able to find online. Um, so that, that way then we're making it uh, as easy as possible for you to come wherever you are in the world uh, here um, and, we will, and, we, and we're trying to make it the best possible experience as well. So I hope that answers the uh, accommodation question. Um, what have, have you got any more to add on that, Andrew? Because you're coming all the way um, to Boston. Um, I want to also say I think the accommodation piece would also apply to, to Australians. Um, you know, it's a significantly intense program, but we'll leave it up to you um, in terms of the type of experience you want to get. Um, um, even though, you know, you're, in, you're back in your home, uh, home city and home uh, town, um, you're going to get a, a significantly uh, more um, engaged experience if you 
um, stay together with the entire cohort. And that's what we've seen, you know, literally you're making lifelong um, uh, bonds, uh, you're forging lifelong bonds with the, uh, the cohort that you're in. And, um, you know, really, how, how long? But it's been two years. It's been two years now. Um, we've been friends for <laughs> yeah, two, two years. Uh, it seems like a lifetime. Um, yeah. yeah but, but and and look, I hope you can see the the rapport between Andrew and I, um, and you'll see that along amongst a lot of the cohort. Um, the, the, there's been a, a number of cohort that have all interacted. They're now doing things backwards and forwards with um, with MIT, and we're all a pretty nice little clo close knit community. Yeah. Um, and and it's this it's that experience that that gets us through there. Look, I've seen. Another really good question that's come through from Alberto. I hope uh, I got that before right. Before you get into that, can we talk about a few things? things? Yes. Um, I think one of the uh, key parts uh, specifically about what can we do to prepare for the boot camp. Yep. Um, to prepare for the boot camp is imperative that you take all the online courses. And all the online courses, uh, the links to the courses are on the header of the uh, bootcamp.mit.edu slash entrepreneurship page. The header on top says user innovation, entrepreneurship 101, and entrepreneurship 102. It, it is significantly imperative for you to um, acquire this uh, knowledge and content ahead of time um, prior to you attending the boot camp because what's going to happen at the boot camp is going to be rapid fire, it's going to be extremely fast, and you will be required to practice the knowledge you have acquired on the online course, that's what we're we're all about. You know, it, it, it's not there just to learn by receiving, but really, really theory at um, MIT needs to be practiced, which is core to the the, the mission and motto of MIT, Mente Manus, which is head and hand, and theory needs to be practiced. So, um, in advance of that, that's what you will want to be preparing uh, for the boot camp. Andrew, I'm just going to um, do a quick screen cap and we'll show where the, uh, the logins are for that. Um, Absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm We're we're also going to um, through admission uh, letters. We're also going to send links to all of the uh, pre reads that need to be done and the online courses. Um, Andrew, in your opinion, how long would it take uh, to do that course? If if, you, if to do all the three courses online um, and absorb the information, I mean, to to be able to gather enough information that you prepped for the boot camp. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um in my opinion, if you really were focused, you could probably do it in a week or less. Yeah. Um, so, so here's an interesting story. Last year, uh, not last year, the last weekend, uh, one, of, one of the applicants uh, was so excited. And, and she, uh, she literally, uh, in the time that she received her uh, applic uh, invitation to interview, to the time that she got interviewed, which was, I don't know, a week, um, she pretty much finished it in three days. So, um, yeah. Did she just go like non-stop, burn them? Yeah, pretty much. Out? So we, yeah. um, we had another um, guy, Spencer, um, from Brisbane. Yeah. He, he was from Brisbane. Uh, and Spencer's a great story as well. Like he um, got in, had to do the online courses. So I think he smashed them out in, in uh, it wasn't three days, I think it was a week. Um, and uh, during boot camp, while Spencer was was in Boston, he got a job offer for a robotics startup in London. So he literally got on a plane from Boston and flew to London and started a job in in London. Um, so you know, boot camp do doesn't just uh, help you get into the startups or any of that sort of process. It does actually help career um, career wise, especially if you're looking at focusing. Uh, in the in the startup industry, and and that's you know one of many many stories out there because I I do see a few you know will it help me start a business and do other bits and pieces? Yes, you're going to get all the information to do that, um, 
and uh, to, to start a business, but it's also going to provide you information to form teams to work within corporates as well. Um, you know, even as simple as taking a project where they say, look, we, we're about to start this project. A project, a new project is a startup. Um, so the skills that you're going to learn is to, to go through and start a new project and, and take that through in, in a corporate. Um, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so Billy, there was a question that said, um, why Brisbane? Um, can you talk a little bit more about Brisbane's um, plan to become a global innovation hub? Well, I, I, I touched on it very early on in the stream. Um, look, there's a, there's a few things, um, and I'm going to talk as a uh, proud Australian, and, uh, um, uh, you know, so please forgive me for being a bit... bit bit proud of where I'm from. Um, look, traditionally Australia's been a fairly isolated country where, um, you know, one of the only landlocked continents in the world that's a country, an island continent. Um, and we have a small population and uh, it's a big mass of land and we're separated by a lot of distance between one point to another. Um, and so as a result, those things are just culturally... We've, we've had to do things ourselves, you know, we can see stuff happening around the, the rest of the world, um, but if you go back 50 years, uh, we, we really had to rely on our own resources to create our own stuff. Um, and so, inherently that created innovation, um, it created inventiveness, um, we can't get what we need from the rest of the world because uh, it'd be too expensive, so let's work out how we do it here and, and, and do it a different way. Um, so as a result of that, we, we created a, a fairly interesting mindset. Now, move on to today's time. It's cheap to fly, it's cheap to travel, it's cheap for logistics. Um, we're very well connected into Asia. We can get a lot of stuff manufactured overseas and brought back. Um, but that entrepreneurial and innovative mindset's still here. Um, now, Brisbane's a very interesting city. Uh, it's, it's a growing city. Um, it's one that the spotlight hasn't been mu on very much. Um, and it, interestingly enough, when it comes to the history of tech and the internet, um, the, the Great Southern Cable came into Brisbane um, and one of the major root DNS servers and systems were actually set up and, and ran in Brisbane because the fibre was some of the best fibre connection up here. And as a result... Um, we ended up having a, a fairly good technology sector that started to grow through that. Um, and that was fed into by a lot of the universities. Um, next to that, we've got QUT, which is uh, a, a, just an amazing university that, that very recently or, or, or in the last few years um, has just taken on, taken the ball and run with it. And we've got a very supportive state government that's fed um, a lot of investment into QUT, um, University of Queensland, uh, Griffith University, um, uh, Southern Cross Universities, all the universities in the precinct, and encourage them to set up um, and go for and, and, and run with innovation, take ideas, turn them into something. Um, so, so that's bubbling. That in this area, it's bubbling up. Um, and when we bought, uh, when I bought the the team members from MIT over, um, Andrew was part of a team that were actually scoping out the next city to run the boot camp in. Um, we, we had the privilege of touring through all the different innovation precincts in Brisbane. Um, and Andrew, honestly, you're probably the best person to, to, to answer what you saw because I'm just going to sound like a proud Aussie and say, oh, yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, it was but, awesome. But, it was but, awesome, but, still is awesome. But, but you, saw it, you saw it with your own eyes, so it'd be... Good to be able to, to, to say what you saw because you saw the startups and accelerators and and, uh, and and you know the robotics and and uh, right. and even the fashion industry that we're we're developing here as well. Um, yeah. So share some of it, like you can share a little. Well, bit so like. so you know, I mean, QUT is a Australian leader in the the technology space. Um, they are doing fantastic things. Um, they have a fantastic place called the Cube, um, where literally it's wall to three stories from the from the ground 
to three stories high of the entire wall of you know cool technology and experimentation. And the best part is that it's in many ways similar to MIT. Um, literally, the entire campus and space there is open to 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 the public to use to to share um, to learn. And and what uh, kind of blew me away was that they were saying things like, "Oh, on weekends, um, families come here all the time to um, to spend time with their children." And like, what? How? And like that was that was really amazing. Um, I, I actually got some get... footage, Andrew, of the cube. The, the... Well, I actually don't. No, I, I do. I've got you, some. Oh, you do. Yeah, right, do, right. Do, so uh, do you want me to, to share it with everyone? Yeah, yeah, you can share it. I think um, the other part that we also probably want to talk about is you know the application process and what happens when you do get admitted and you do get in, and then now you have to make this. Um, you know, you have to get through the process. Uh, one of the things that was, that was a question was the visa um, part for other countries. Yes. So, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, so, we're working fairly closely with um, DFAT and also Border and Security um, and also the Queensland State Government um, to, to work uh, in, in, in make it as easy as possible um, to be able to, to receive visas and come through. But of course, um, border protection is there uh, to protect the borders of every nation. Um, and, and ours are the same. So the, the application process with the visas, when um, the admission letters come out, we'll actually uh, send you information on what you need to do to be able to apply for the visa. Um, and, uh, and, and that would be able to expedite and help go through the process. But for you to know in the background, um, as, as those applications come through, we'll, we will work very closely with Border and Security, pass your names onto them um, and, and have them look after the process. Um, we're dealing directly with them, so we can also give some feedback. Um, I'm not sure how much, <laughs> so I might be overstepping the mark on saying, you know, we'll be able to tell you what you need to do. But at the, at the important part is, is that uh, Queensland sees this as a very, very important event and program um, and admission to it. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that we can get as many people from as many places in the world as possible um, through. And, and um, you know, if we see that you're from a country that uh, it would take a little bit longer to, to get a visa, well, we're going to jump in straight away and say, look, you need to start this now um, and, uh, and be able to push through the process. Um, and then we'll also be... Uh, working with border and security, um, providing here's the admission letters, here's stuff from QT, stuff from the state government, um, to make all of that process uh, as smooth as possible. Um, I think that's the easiest answer I can give. Um, look, there's one a, a question that's flipped through a few times here about um, startups uh, and, and cycling through a couple of startups for me, and um, and now I've lost it. So you've started a couple of stick tech startups in the past, at boot camp, would you consider a non-tech business ideas for a team to work on? Um, Alberta, yes. Um, and let me make my camera bigger so that you can see me a little bit more. Um, oh dear. Hey, this is the cube, by the way. Um, so, uh, this, just, just while I'm getting talking about that, what's going out there, is the cube. The impressive building um, behind me is the Science and, uh, Center. Inside we'll fast forward through the, the process and see the cube we represents a, a, a global significant audio, visual and IT um, project. So this is what it's Andrew was talking about before. For QUT, it's about big data, it's about research, and, uh, it's about visualisation. What I'm going to do, we'll get, it's back, about we'll get back to that because I'd rather get back to what we were talking about with the startups. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan um, of uh, definitely all sorts of different tangible things. Tech's not the only thing that creates a business. Science, technology, um, engineering, and maths there's, uh, is a very important you know, area a, for lo Australia. Lots of other amazing businesses that are out there. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we should really uh, encourage as much stuff that's coming through. Um, agriculture, uh, tangible, normal retail sales, um, you, you know, you name it. A anything that involves... Uh, 
taking a dollar and turning it into three dollars, uh, providing value, um, that's a business. And the, the boot camp process t teaches you how to do that sort of stuff in a way that's sustainable and scalable. Um, I myself, I mean, I've done some tech startups, but I also work in, in the retail sector. Um, I've got a couple of boat uh, businesses um, that, that sell like jet skis and boats and things like that that we've worked in. So, you know, that's, that's like as far away from tech as possible. Um, so, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Business is business is business. You know, tech's just a tool. Andrew. Yes. What have we got? Um, All right. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people are asking about exposure to investors, um, you know, the experience being like a traditional accelerator where we put you in front of investors. Yes, we put you in front of investors. Yes, we, we try to make this as much of a real experience for you in that, that specifically, um, you know, with real investors and stuff like that. But like, consider this, this, this program is not specifically a program to get you an investment. Okay. This program is an investment in your entrepreneurship journey. Um, it is an investment in you as a person, and it is made to simulate um, the rigors of startup life, of the first two, three years of startup life. But the reality is that it's not specifically meant to be an investment vehicle. Um, we put you in front of real investors. We put you in front of angels, uh, VCs, and, and everybody else. But at the same time, we need to understand that... Uh, the majority of the people um, are not there specifically to invest. They are there to create and help us simulate this real-world environment of what it is in, and without the um, downsides, okay? Because very often when you meet an investor and you're not ready, you may, you may end up um, shooting yourself in the foot in the sense that you may not get a second chance. And so in wanting you to be prepared for that one chance with the investor. This is what we bring you through to that through that through this process to to get ready for that. So I think we need to be really clear that the this is an educational um, program. It is not specifically an accelerator um, and please don't think of it as such. Um, look, if I can add my piece there as well, um, the, the reason why we expose uh, you to investors and, and angel, uh, angel investors and VCs and all sorts of stuff like that um, is to create a, an awareness and exposure of what it is that they're looking for. Um, and we're also aiming to try and set you up with the knowledge that you know what it is that investors and VCs are, are, are looking for, for raising capital. But you know, raising capital is only one, one small part of, of running business. A lot of startups these days, they think, you know, they, they focus 100% on running around chasing venture capitalists. And to be honest, um, the first person you should be chasing to call yourself a business is a customer. And the next person right. after your first customer you should be chasing is your second customer. And then your third customer and your fourth customer. And look, <coughs> investors aren't going to actually grab hold of a business um, just because it's a really good idea. Um, they're going to hold, grab hold of a business and invest in it so that they can make money. And the best measure they have on how to make money is how many customers does this business have. Um, and I know that does sound counter to, to everything you hear in the tech world and everything you read when you read the press and the media and all these big capital raises. Um, but all of those investments uh, come back to businesses that chase customers. And so uh, what, what we do at Bootcamp is we expose you to the people that invest in the businesses so you know what they're looking for. Um, you're, you, you've, you're first-hand, one-on-one, -on -one, and you can have robust conversations with them um, and find out what it is that they're looking for to help you shape um, and, and pursue uh, a, a business that, that, that might get invested in. But, you know, you don't need to be invested in. That's, that's the, and that's the other learning you'll get from it. 
You don't need investors. Um, customers are the best investors in businesses you can possibly get. Um, and, uh, and, you know, self-funded businesses through growth, uh, through customer growth, uh, are the best. And the best, the reason being, you own that 100%. It's yours. No one else is telling you what to do. Um, so, so that's the other part. But I hope that answers that, that, that question, folks. Yeah, so um, a few other questions here. Um, the cost to attend as well as the learning outcomes and the admissions criteria can be found on the program page, uh, bootcamp.mit.edu slash entrepreneurship slash program. Um, somebody asked about, um, okay, uh, somebody asked about transferable educational credits, Dijon 2006. Um, can you tell us more what you mean? There, because this is such a short program, there are no specific uh, educational credits that we transfer. Um, we're actually looking into the CEUs, the Continuing Education Units, um, and that's, that's something very much in the works that we are looking into at this point. Um, in terms of the probability in uh, being selected by for the boot camp, it really depends on you. Um, we can put you statistics, but at the same time, um, the application process is designed as a continuum in the experience to say that like cream rising to the top, if you put in the hard work, you will rise to the top and we will notice you. And I would put it that way because giving you statistics doesn't mean anything. Um, if you're willing to work hard, if you're willing to um, put effort into your application and to subsequently attend the boot camp, you will not be disappointed. Um, Billy, there was another question specifically. What was the what was your best moment in the boot camp? Um, well. So I can see this from two sides. Um, as, as a participant, um, look, one of the things that happened through us in, in, in our team, um, we, we had an excellent, uh, we, we saw an excellent opportunity. Um, we had uh, a girl called Sarah was in my team. Um, she pitched a, a, a really sort of interesting idea and, and we formed around that and thought, you know, we can actually do something with this. We can, uh, I think we could make a business out of this. Um, and uh, so we, we grouped together. And I, my thoughts were, well, I'd say about Wednesday night, uh, about 1 a.m. in the morning. And uh, we'd gone through this, this terrible amount of stress because we've been working very hard and we were facing we were looking down the barrel that we literally had 30 hours uh to to, to finish the work that we needed to do to be able to stand up and pitch and it was at that moment um we realized that we had nothing <laughs> now that was the, the, the it, it sounds like the worst moment but it was the best moment because um we all teamed together and and I actually saw the power of what it is when you can all group together and just get it done. Um, and looking back, that was a, a, a wonderful investment in, um, Andrew was talking before about the Navy SEALs and knowing when you're about to give up, you've still got 40% left. Um, and that was one of those moments where it's like, we've got nothing. Um, and it was a go, no, go stage. We could just give, let's just give up and go home because like, who's going to finish this in 30 hours? Um, or we can just power on and work hard and, and, and push through it. Um, so we, ch we chose the second. We powered on. We pushed through. We didn't sleep. Um, we had lectures on the Thursday to get through. So we weren't allowed. In fact, um, if my memory serves me correct, <laughs> I, I was well known for walking into the lecture theatre with, with one, one coffee stacked on top of the other. <laughs> That's right. Um, lectures had already started because I'd overslept a little bit, and uh, on the, on the Thursday, and so not only were we late, or, and we had to have a lot of work, but Bill Olette, I think, was busting, <laughs> busting me. 
Um, for, for the, like he kept his eye on me for the whole uh, rest of the day in the lecture, so I could do no work. Um, and we got through for the rest of the, the night to, to continue to work on the Thursday night, which was another late night. Um, and we went on to win. So for me, that was an excellent um, experience in, in, in the process. And, and it was just, it was great to see how well the team glued together. And I've used, definitely used that knowledge um, since then to help teams form um, in my consulting work uh, and, and push them through and take them through that process. So that, that's been the best experience for me. Um, yeah. And, and then, like, I mean, I could talk for hours on the, on the other camps <laughs> that I've mentored there. But, Andrew, probably before I take over, you should share. Well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, um, Juan asked, so what is the worst experience? And I'm going to probably answer that very, <laughs> <laughs> the, the worst experience. Going home. That's right. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Going home was probably the worst experience, you know. Well, um, but, but Andrew, you, didn't, you didn't go home. You're still well, there. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm still here. But like, I, I mean, I, I, I left, and then I had to keep up the uh, connection with MIT, and, and the rest is history. And now, so privileged to be here with you um, at the mothership um, to to uh, to lead the next generation forward. Uh, and to help them discover their dreams. All right, uh, I've, I've got some, some really cool footage of Brisbane All right. um, yes. that I, I wanted to just smash out there and hopefully the audio and everything will go through. It worked when I tested it before. <laughs> but this is 100% live. So um, here's a little taste of Brisbane. Um, I, I, I... Um, of, of what Brisbane's all about. Um, we're back live now, Andrew, um, okay. and uh, streaming out. So, look, I think we've, we've knocked this out for about an hour. It's probably yeah. a good time to wrap it up. Otherwise, I, I think we'll just be patting ourselves on the back over and over again. Yeah, um, so um, final words, Billy. Um, final words and advice for those that have not completed, uh, you know, round one, round two, round three, um, we're, and just for, so to, to be very clear, we're looking at the um, applications at round three and we're, we're screening them to be interviewed. So if you want to get interviewed, you've got to get to round three, right? And, and we have the alumni interviewers very excited. They're, they're waiting to, to interview you. So you absolutely have to get to round three. Um, Billy, any last words? Um, just keep going. <laughs> Don't stop. Um, push through, get, get, uh, if you've got to write those essays, write them out there. Um, look, can I just add the thing on the video because uh, I haven't actually seen anyone uh, ask the questions and, and not everyone here that's watching the live stream have actually got to the point of making a little personal video of themselves. Um, but there are some people uh, watching the stream that are at, at round three. Um, so one of the asks is make a little video of yourself. Um, literally. Uh, what we're interested in is we want to see you on camera um, and we want to hear what you have to say. Um, so it doesn't need to be Hollywood, just grab your, you know, your phone and uh, talk into it, uh, do, do a selfie and um, you know, that, that, that's going to be suffice. What we're interested in what is what you have to say, um, the, the content of what's inside, um, not how amazingly good the, the, the video quality is. Um, so just just as a matter of interest, because you know there's some people killing themselves trying to make Star Wars, 
um, in 60 seconds. And, in, and it's not necessary. It's what you have to say. Um, final thoughts, Andrew. Yeah, so um, keep up the good work. The videos are awesome. We can't wait to see you in Brisbane. Uh, we're going to have more webinars like this, so um, we're going to keep going. So um, until the next time, we wish you all the best, and, and, and thank you for attending. Okay, guys, see you for now. We'll wrap this one up. Goodbye. Thank you for all your questions, and um, see you in Brisbane. All right. I'm Bill Allett. I'm the Managing Director of the Martin Trust Center for MIT Entrepreneurship. We help hundreds of entrepreneurs build great products and great teams. These are the two most important elements for a successful new venture. We encourage our students to have hackers, hustlers, and hipsters on the team because this hybrid vigor increases their odds of producing a truly great company. I'm Ardin Bashimov. I run an experimental production group at MIT. I'm also a teaching fellow in this course. Bill said that entrepreneurship is about team. Well, so is online education. We brought together Hollywood cinematographers, great graphic designers, instructional designers, MIT entrepreneurs, and MIT faculty to create the Ferrari of online education for you. When MIT first started in the online education area, we put people in the back of the room with cameras to record the lectures. This is 600, also known as Introduction to Computer Science. We're going to start with non-linear analysis. And what is not covered today can and will be on the exam. That was a good start, but as time has gone on, we can do so much more. Today, with the advanced technologies, as well as incorporating cinematography techniques, we can interweave powerful stories with the lectures to give a vibrant and energetic experience to people well beyond the walls of MIT. This is transmedia at its most experimental, and in my opinion, at its best. We are taking one medium, filmmaking, and taking it into a whole different medium, the internet and online education. The goal of the course is to continue the entrepreneurial revolution around the world. If at least one of you starts a company and feels like you're changing the world and the people that you bring into your company, they feel like they're changing the world, we have done our job. Nothing will make us happier than that. So welcome to the course and good luck. MIT began as an institution designed to serve the needs of our society at an early stage of its industrialization. If we are to produce the kind of world required for the safety and well-being of the human beings who live in it, we must build on this international tradition.